Now, some Disney songs almost live longer in our memories than the films themselves, but very few have made the top 10 in the official music charts. But Disney's latest film, Encanto, has three, yes, three songs in the top 10 at the moment. I mean, even massive kind of the Disney massive hits you would think of, like Let It Go from Frozen or Circle of Life from The Lion King, only got to the dizzy heights of number 11. So what is so special about this film and what is making us all stream and download the music? So here's where we are at the moment in a top 10 countdown style at number nine at the moment. This is the one that really, this one, oh, I sing this one a lot. This is my family, a perfect constellation. So many stars. Everybody gets to shine. Whoa. This is called the Family Madrigal. This is the opener of the film that introduces you to all the characters. So many years ago. Whoa. And every year our family blessings grow. There's just a lot you simply got to know. So welcome to the family. And my kids know all the words. It is quite bonkers because I've only seen the film twice or three times. So that's at number nine in the top ten at the moment. This is at number three. is surface pressure. It was thought this one might knock Bruno off number one at the weekend, but it didn't quite manage it because this one just refuses to die. Oh, I'm sorry if I've just put that back in your head again. Fourth week at number one for We Don't Talk About Bruno. Why, though? Uh, here to try and unpick it with us is film critic Van Connor. Morning, Van. Morning, Sophie. Yeah, this is uh, this is quite the one in Kanto. I, <laughs> I, 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 I revisited this for the very first time uh, just before speaking to you. I, I reviewed this when it came out months ago. Uh, I sort of I dismissed it. I didn't like it anywhere near as much really? as Ryder and The Last Dragon. That's and and I thought I thought the whole thing at the time I thought yeah it's cute and everything, but I think the Lin Manuel Miranda connection <laughs> is taking unfair credit away from from my beloved Raya. And you know I have to admit like it has grown on me. It's one of those yeah. movies and we've had a few in recent years that have very quickly gained traction. You kind of revisit very quickly. Think of the, the Greatest that, Showman, for instance. Yeah, and they sort you of know, creep. Like, you find yourself singing them while washing up, you know, and you're like, what the. Where does, you know, where's this come from in my brain? Because I've only seen it sort of one and a half times myself. So, do, I mean, you think, <laughs> do you think it's the Lin Manuel Miranda thing because he's done Hamilton and he did Moana? Or, or is it the, the film? What do you think? I think there's a combination of the two. Now, the film itself is, is charming in its own right. As far as the Lin Manuel Miranda connection goes, what you've, you, you've got to address there as well is the fact that plot wise, Encanto is not that dissimilar to Moana, which was, you know, sort of one of the previous Lin Manuel Miranda contributing to a Disney uh, offerings. Um, and, and with that, what you get is the idea that apparently in Moana, there was the idea at one point she was meant to have eight brothers. Yes, and I that read they this. removed that element late on. Yeah. And that the, when they got to develop uh, uh, Encanto, then they thought, okay, well, let's put that extended family element back in because that's more crucial to, say, this region of Latin America that we're covering this time around. Which to be more Colombian, I think, in this incarnation. But it does seem like Moana was sort of just a practice run in terms of quality for everything they would then step up for Encanto. Like, everything here seems to be a more streamlined version of something you've got a more primitive take on in Moana. It's, it's the same kind of charm, but there's more of it, and it's slightly slicker. That's there's the same kind I like of, of Moana musical better. numbers, but it's more in slick, yeah. You know, I'm, I, I Entirely don't... possible, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed The Rock and his turn uh, <laughs> yeah. in very much. I liked The Chicken. I feel like there's not as many mm. comedy animal elements in the new one. Um, do you think this is going to set the bar, Van? for going forward for the next and the next and the next that chart topping or top 10 chart success is going to be one of those expectations going forward. 
Well, funnily enough, Sophie, I think it feeds into what you were just saying about actually preferring Moana, because I mm. think what we've seen illustrated here is this has seen arguably, well, inarguably, really, a lot more popularity than Moana a lot quicker. Mm. And Moana is kind of more or less a two-hander between, as you say, The Rock and, and Moana herself. And I apologize, I never remember the actress's name. Um, and in this incarnation, what you've got is a lot more of an ensemble piece. You've got a central character but there's a much bigger supporting cast and I think that family element and, and the fact the film is so literally about family in that way that Inside Out is quite literally about literal emotions. Mm. You know, literal in your face physical emotions. This is quite literally you know, this wears its metaphors on literal sleeves. It, I think seeing the difference in terms of the scale of the success there I think is going to push towards more group driven and more ensemble driven stories mm. going forward. All oh, right, interesting. Great to speak to you about it. And I know it was uh, one of your life goals to be introduced um, with We Don't Talk About Bruno. So there we go. We've done that for you, Van. Film critic Van Connor uh, ticking that off. Maybe uh, give it a watch this weekend if you haven't yet for Encanto.